For the second year in a row, the Jets start their season with three losses and in real embarrassing fashion. Here are my top five takeaways. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. If you are like me and just want the suffering to end, the Just End the Suffering shirt is in the Jets Talk store. So if you want to see that or get that, link is in the description down below. But let's jump right into my top five takeaways from today's game. And it was a doozy. The Jets wind up losing 36 to seven. At number five, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, and that's Sam Darnold's performance today. 168 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions, and a safety. Two of those interceptions were pick sixes. Very ugly day for Sam. Really not a good look. And if you thought the rumors and the yells for Trevor Lawrence were loud last week, it is going to get 10 times worse after seeing this game today. 16 of the points that the Colts scored were on plays directly resulting from a play that happened from Sam Darnold. So whether that be the two pick sixes and the safety, so that would knock them down to say 20 points. 20 points to seven doesn't sound as bad. Not to mention the interception in the red zone. Sam led all quarterbacks in inter- red zone interceptions last year with four. If he gets three points, ten, uh, three points or seven points there, all of a sudden it's 14-20. This game is within striking distance at least. But the Jets really never had a shot. And because of these turnovers, the Jets were put in bad situations time after time after time. And I understand we are without a lot of our playmakers, but this is just unacceptable. You cannot give the ball away as much as we've seen. And now maybe this is why we did not see Sam throwing the ball as much. Maybe Adam Gase feels like Sam is not the guy and he's going to be turnover prone and he's going to cause all these mistakes. So maybe he was trying to shelter him by throwing close to the line of scrimmage. At number four, I have the Colts defense, and they are absolutely filthy. Between Houston and Buckner, and Rhodes getting two interceptions, the other interception, the safety. Ah, the <laughs> Jets couldn't get anything going. We couldn't get out of our own way. This is embarrassing. This is what you want the Jets defense to look like, but we have no pass rushers. We have no linebackers. We could not stop a nosebleed. And if you told me that before this game that Philip Rivers' stat line was going to be 217 yards and a touchdown, I would have said the Jets had a fighting shot at winning this game. Nope. Nope. Not even close. At number three, we have Braxton Barrios. And this is going to be a positive takeaway. Shocking that there's any of these <laughs> any of these at all. But I actually liked what I saw out of him. He had four receptions for 64 yards and a touchdown. This is the second touchdown in two games for him. Again, Sam had to run like crazy to get him the ball. Beautifully thrown pass, beautifully executed pocket presence by Sam. Barrios might be someone that we can consider long-term in terms of a slot receiver after Crowder is done after next year. So keep an eye on him. I'd like to see his development as we go through the rest of the season. But if there's any little you know, glass half full, maybe that's it. At number two, I have the injuries and the Jets are so injured. We already are without wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, running back one, right tackle, and now we are without our left tackle in Makai Becton. With the Jets playing Thursday night against the Denver Broncos, I have a very, very low likelihood that the Jets are going to play anyone that was hurt in this game in that Thursday night game. I think we're waiting, you know, give them the extra 10 days rest. And that tells me that we are going to be in rough shape because if the Jets can't come away with a win against a backup quarterback with banged up wide receivers with a team without Von Miller, that's going to be awful because I'm looking at the rest of this schedule and I don't see another win on this roster. If you're looking at the Broncos, maybe you win one of the two Miami games late in the season or if the Browns kind of fall apart, maybe you have a shot against them. But the way the Jets have played the first three weeks, not a shot. I will not take them in any of my pick em, you know, pick em weeks until they can prove they can at least score the ball. Oh, oh, this team sucks. And at number one, let's talk about Adam Gase. There were rumors before the game started that Adam Gase was going to be on the hot seat. There were higher ups in the Jets organization talking about what they should be doing with Adam Gase. I had projected last week that the Jets might move on from Gase after the Thursday night game because it gives you a 10 day period where you can kind of get a new head coach in or at least bring Greg Williams up to be the interim head coach and sort of implement maybe a new uh, new scheme or new sort of ideas 
before you get into that, that that next game. Now, today's game, I can't really fault Gase too much. I thought, by and large, I was okay with the play calls. Um, I like the play action. I like the bootlegs. I think Sam was thrown downfield a little bit more. Now, a lot of it, I think, has to do with us just not having talent. Like I said, we were without all our starting wide receivers, our starting running back, both tackles at this point. So it's hard to really get a concrete grade on it. Was Sam holding onto the ball because these players could not get open? Was he holding onto the ball because Sam's bad? I, it's, it's, it's tough to kind of tell. Now, he did have the weird play calls towards the end of the first half. That really could have resulted in an extra three points for the Colts. Now, ultimately, that wouldn't have really made a difference. But still questionable play calling decisions. Of the 12 games that we have lost while Adam Gase has been our head coach, 11 of those have been by two scores or more. And that other one was by eight points. So, you know, a touchdown and two-point conversion. Almost two scores. <laughs> as close as you could get to two scores without it actually being two scores. You have to get in the end zone two times. Let's say that. <laughs> you have to at least get two scores. Ugh. I have seen enough from Adam Gase. I'm really, I'm done with it. I know this game isn't 100% on him. It's got to be 100% on Sam Darnold for this one. But I don't see any way that the Jets come out looking better Thursday on short rest with all these backups. I think it's going to get ugly. I think you're only going to start hearing these these yells louder and louder for the number one overall pick and Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. like All these guys that you could be talking about for the Jets potentially taking a number one. And go figure. The Giants <laughs> and the Jets may be picking one, two uh, this year. God, New York football or New Jersey football. I can't even call us a New York team right now. It's just how embarrassing it is. It's just, ugh. I just want to be grateful and like enjoy a game. It's I sat here all Sunday for you guys, for you guys, <laughs> to, to just get some analysis. And, uh, oh, God, I feel like I'm wasting my Sundays. <laughs> no, I, I enjoy it with you guys. I'm going to be doing a post-game Thursday. Uh, we are gonna, going to be skipping the Tuesday Talking Jets panel this week. We're actually going to do that on Monday. So tomorrow night, we're going to be doing the Talking Jets panel. Uh, me, O'Leary, and Greenbean. So make sure you tune into that. If you guys want to support the channel and you want to get one of the Just End the Suffering t-shirts, I'll leave a link for that down in the description down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, go Jets. Jets!